The book of Acts has 28 chapters. Uh, you remember the book of John had 21 chapters. And uh, different versions give different headings to this book. Some of the versions you just call it Acts. Some of the other versions, like my King James version, call, calls it Acts of the Apostles. Other, other, other scholars also believe that the title would have been Acts of the Holy Spirit in or through the Apostles. Maybe as you read the Bible, as you read the book of Acts, you'll understand why. Uh, some think that it would have been called the Acts of the Holy Spirit in or through the Apostles. And you realize that actually it's the Holy Spirit who enabled the Apostles as they had been required by Jesus to wait in the upper room. The author of the book of Acts is Luke. You remember we looked at, the, uh, at Luke in the book of Acts when we said that he is the author of the book of Luke. And this is a continuity of the book of Luke. He was a co-worker for those who missed uh, the introduction of Luke. Uh, a co-worker of Paul in the work of ministry. He was a, a physician by profession, and uh, uh, he is the author of the book of Acts. And of course, therefore, if he was a co-worker of Paul and accompanied him in the mission, in the mission journeys, uh, that means he has the evidence of what he has written and, uh, uh, and yes, you'll be blessed as you read it. The purpose of the book of Acts, number one, is to, uh, to remind us that after the death and resurrection of Christ, he ascended into heaven. And not only that he ascended, he also ascended in a bodily form. You read that in Acts 1 and verses 9. The ascending of our Lord Jesus in a body form. Number two, the purpose is that uh, uh, Jesus, he is in heaven. And uh, Stephen was a witness of that. As he says in Acts 7.56, that he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. So Jesus is well and alive at the right hand of our Father. You find that in, seven, uh, in Acts 7, 56. Number three, it also emphasizes or uh, gives us a picture of the first church and the mission of the church. And you'll see it when you read the book, the whole of the book of Acts. Somebody also tried to sum up the book of Acts and uh, he took the name Acts and wrote it down, and he gave us a picture of what you will uh, find in the book of Acts. Uh, so A starts for active, and C starts for Christians, and T starts for teaching, and S stands for students, which actually are uh, well summed up in 2 Timothy chapter 2.2. It's a common verse for every worker, Second Timothy 2.2. 2. And therefore, it implies that when you read the book of Acts, you will see active Christians teaching students. So it is good to make note of that as you read the book of Acts. The outline of the book of Acts, it's number one. From chapter 1, verses 1 to 11, you see the waiting church. Acts chapter 1, verse 1 to 11, you see the waiting church in obedience to what they were required to do by their Lord Jesus Christ. Number 2, from uh, chapter 1, verses 12 to chapter 8, verses 3, you see the spread of the gospel in Jerusalem. And this happens through... Um, what you would say three phases. A, uh, after the Pentecost, you see 
during the Pentecost, you see the baptism of the disciples with the apostles with the Holy Spirit or the 120 followers of Jesus who are waiting in the upper room with the Holy Spirit and, and empowered. And then B, you see Peter's ministry from, uh, uh, from the time of Pentecost. And then you, you see St uh, the, the Brother Stephen's ministry. And then um, in the number three, you see also the spread of the gospel from Judea to Samaria, as Jesus had mentioned, from Acts chapter 8, verses 4, to Acts chapter 11 and verses 8. And this also you see it in three phases, where you see Philip's ministry, and then you see Saul's conversion, where uh, Saul, whom we call Paul, was converted. And then you see Peter's uh, continuity in the ministry, and uh, that takes the gospel to Judea and Samaria. Number four, you see also the spread of the gospel into the rest of the world. From chapter 11, verses 19, to chapter 21 and verses 14. Chapter 11, verses 19, to chapter 21 and verses 19. In this one also, it's broken into um, different ministries and different uh, activities. A, you see Barnabas' ministry. Uh, Barnaba, you remember, is the encourager of the brethren. Then you see uh, the first missionary journey of Paul. And then you see Jerusalem Council meeting because there were issues that arose in the early church. And then D, you see Paul's second, second missionary journey. And lastly, you see Paul's third missionary journey. That takes us to chapter 21, verses 14. Number five, you see Paul's imprisonment that it takes the gospel to Loam, which was the power house or the, the state of the power by then. And you see it also uh, in three phases. You see Paul as a prisoner in Jerusalem. You also see Paul as a prisoner in Caesarea. And also you see Paul ending up in prison in Rome. Lastly, number six, as you get to the last two, two um, verses of chapter 28, you see the fulfillment of Paul's commission to the Gentiles where he was in uh, his hired house for two years in Rome, where he freely preached the gospel, and that was a fulfillment of the mission that he was called into. And now, as you remember that for every book, we have been having a key verse, and also we make it our memory verse, our key verse for the book of Acts, will be the first chapter of the book of Acts. And probably you know it uh, by now, but it's good to memorize it again and look into those words, meditate upon them. Acts chapter 1 and verses 8. It was a call for the church, and the early church fulfilled it. As you will see in the outline, the gospel moved from Jerusalem went out to Judea and Samaria and to the rest of the world. The call has not changed. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, it is our call even today. So that is our memory verse. Memorize it, meditate upon it, allow it to motivate you to take the mandate of the gospel to the end of the world. And the world depends on where God wants you to be. The main teachings that you will see in the book of Acts, it's good also to make note of them, is that number one, you see the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. Please align in your Bibles or light in your notebook. The many times you see the name, the Holy Spirit, 
and anything else that goes with the Holy Spirit. Because you note that in the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit is mentioned in various ways. There is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There is the reading of the Holy Spirit. There is also being filled with the Holy Spirit and sometimes just the Holy Spirit being mentioned. So make note of that, adrain it, and pursue it. That, uh, that yes, you may, it may be your portion. Number two uh, the, of the main teachings, you realize that the, the, the church, the early church was preaching. The early church gave herself to preaching the word of God. Number three, they gave themselves to defend the faith. They gave themselves to defend the faith. Number four, and which is the last one, and it is the key thing that we are pursuing as a church today, is the missionary work and the mission principles. I pray that as you read the book of Acts, these four key teachings in the book of Acts will um, will be highlighted in your heart. You will pursue them. And uh, at the end of the day, we shall take the mandate where the early church left it so that we may also be part of what Christ came to do. Because the book of Acts was to fulfill what Jesus had already started doing. Shalom. Enjoy your week.